Thermopolis. Um, Cause Curtis got a job there. And so he worked as a lawyer there and I worked as a 4-H educator. And so we lived there for a few years. <laughs> And then it was our last year there that we had our kids before we moved to Casper. The beginning of 2012, um, we were contacted by Clover's birth mom um, about adoption. And we had kind of, by that point in time, um, adoption was on our mind a lot. And we were thinking, well, that's the next step. <laughs> and so um, we were contacted by her mom. And, and she was just pregnant at the time. Yeah, so it was very early on in her pregnancy. Um, but we were super excited. We're like, yes, like, that would be amazing. A couple months later, um, I was sick. I just got so sick. And <laughs> after about a week, I'm like, I've got to go to the doctor because this nausea is not going away. And I think I've got the flu. And so then we found out I was pregnant. And so it was a huge shock and surprise. And I couldn't believe it. So we had seen a neurologist and then we had seen a cardiologist and um, they kind of rolled those things out and then um, <clears throat> they had a geneticist come in and he looked at her for a bit and um, then after just looking at her and examining her he wanted to do three different tests and one of them happened to be prader willi syndrome and so that's the one that came back positive and at that she was one month old at that point. Such a crazy syndrome, like you, I've, I mean, I had never heard about it, so it was just all brand new to me. And I remember at first when the doctor was describing it, um, she kind of said, so she'll never feel full. And so in my mind, I was kind of thinking like, oh, okay, so she might just need to be reminded, like, okay, like that, you've had enough because you just can't tell you feel full. Um, but in reality, it's not just about not feeling full, but they feel like they're starving. Like all the time, they feel like they're starving. And so um, they can just have finished a meal, like a very large meal. And then after, even Clover will be like, is it dinner time? I'm like, we just ate. Like, it's so, like, we'll, we'll eat later, you know? So um, they're always feeling hungry. So their stomachs can't talk to their brain. Yeah, so their, um, yeah, their brain just doesn't register um, that they're full. And so it can be really dangerous like you have to be very careful because if they get around food and they're not supervised they could eat until their stomachs burst and so um, it is a life-threatening disorder um, so it's scary it's on our mind a lot we have to always make sure food is put away and that she can't get to it it's hard it's hard to explain because it's so complex like it's just it's so crazy and so um, it affects the part of your brain called the hypothalamus and that part of your brain, um, it kind of helps control your whole body. It kind of keeps everything working how it should. <laughs> um, and so, um, like, she has temperature dysregulation. Um, she has a high pain threshold. She um, has sleep disturbances. She has sleep apnea, so she's on. she wears oxygen at night. Um, it can affect behavior, cause anxiety, uh, developmental delays, and learning disabilities. Yeah, I remember, so I ended up having to have an emergency C-section. And so he didn't get there in time by the time they had to do that. And so after I'm laying there and Curtis walks in, um, and he's like all dressed up in scrubs and um, Henry was just born like a few minutes before that. And I just remember I looked at him, I'm like, where's Clover? And he's like, she's with the ladies at the front desk. <laughs> they were just great. And even before Henry, you know, before we even knew or um, before he was screened, they would just be so good to include him too. Cause we have, they're both the same age and so with therapy, especially when they're little, it's just about playing and a lot of toys. And so he was curious and they were just, I really appreciated how well they included him too. And it was fun for both of them. Um, Even when it wasn't his therapy. Yeah, so then when he started, he kind of knew about it. And I think he was like, oh cool, like I get, I get to do it too. 
she never really crawled. Like, she kind of would crawl, um, but she would butt scoot. So she would just scoot all over the house, like, and she was really fast. <laughs> Um, and she eventually crawled too, but she would much prefer to do the butt scoot. Yeah. <laughs> and even when we started, um, when she started preschool at three here, she wasn't walking. So she would scoot around the class to get around. So she started school here when she was three. So in, by then I think it was like September, the beginning of September. And then by around Christmas time, she took her first steps and, um, I heard all about it because it happened here at school and I remember um, some teachers here were texting me and they're like, I just saw Clover walk and um, it was just really cool that they were as excited as we were. I'm like, oh my gosh, so it was exciting. So today it's, it's crazy to think that they're five. I can't believe how fast time has gone by and um, they're both doing awesome. They love school. Um, I always say, like, if I could have known how well Clover would be doing and what life really would be like, I wouldn't have cried so much and worried so much, like in the NICU and in her early days when it was just so scary. And she's just been awesome. <laughs> so now she can go down the three steps from our porch by herself, which is huge. Mm -hmm. She can jump one inch off the floor. Um, She's counting. Henry's talking. talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Henry didn't talk probably till he was four. And so he's talking all the time now. She's still on oxygen at night for her sleep apnea. And she still struggles with low tone. It'll be a thing that she'll always struggle with. Um, but she's getting, every day she's still getting stronger. So um, our hope for Clover and Henry um, is just that they can live happy lives. Um, I think that's my biggest thing. I just want them to be happy and just, I don't know, every day just be able to meet their fullest potential. Like I just, our hope for Clover and Henry as they move on from this school is I hope they have a school experience that's as positive as this one has been for them. Um, that would be just the best.